Hello again, I'm Grant Abbott, you're watching Gabbit Media, and today we are making hands. So this is part of Sculpt January 2019, and the topic today was hand poses, and it's quite tough. Uh, so I'm going to take you through how I did it. I thought I'd go a bit more tutorialified today rather than rambling on, hopefully. Uh, so you can see the final result on the screen. Um, I started with uh, the fingers, so and I started with a blob, and that's easy enough. You can use an icosphere, subdivided sphere, just something with a good amount of even topology. Uh, and you can see instantly the problem you have when you're starting off modeling with that approach. When you use the snake hook tool to pull things out, uh, it does go in odd directions, even with rake turned on, but that helps your directions uh, and it rotates with your brush. Uh, thank you to those who told me that one. So I just made a basic finger and then copied the finger just to get the shape. Uh, so later on I'm going to go back to that original finger, smarten it up a bit and then copy it with some details. Uh, that's my thinking. Then I'll boolean, boolean it to my main shape, so add it to my main shape. Uh, so that's the way I approached it. You can, I've done this with metaballs before, and that was a good approach as well, but I thought I'd try something different, so there's uh, many approaches you can take to doing your hands. And uh, you can see me sculpting out the base of the hand now, so it's a bit like a sort of splatted pancake or something. Uh, it's not uh, it's not round. Uh, you really do have to think about the hand shape because uh, it's it's sort of like a square. If you're looking at my hand at the moment, uh, there's a square and then the thumb comes out. But there's quite a lot of that section there uh, that you have to consider as well. So it's not a square and then a blob sticking out from it. That blob is really attached to the square, which is the thumb. Um, I started uh, sculpting that the wrong way around, so I scaled it in the Z to um, minus one to sort it all out. I was doing all this on my uh, Wacom Mobile Studio Pro and um, like I've said before, I've, I've lost the keyboard. <laughs> so I've got to buy a new keyboard. Uh, but that means I'm doing no shortcut buttons, so it's a bit slower than normal. So it should be uh, handy for those trying to follow along with sort of tutorial aspects. All the links are in the description for how I set up base meshes and things like that. And also, uh, what's really interesting about this particular episode uh, and what I really was trying. I didn't work really hard on the sculpt. I worked hard on my knowledge of sculpting uh, in terms of the technical aspects this time. And the big thing I was thinking about was uh, people have been talking and telling me about uh, linking multi-resolution with um, dyna dynamic topology. Uh, and I've, it's something I've done before, but I've not done it with armatures as well. And I was thinking, how am I gonna get that to work? Uh, and if you're trying to pose hands, then that's uh, quite a tricky one. And if you, let's say you've got two, obviously you've got two hands, haven't you, on your characters, you're gonna want to pose them separately and things. And so I was trying to uh, figure out how I could go about that without losing detail, or too much detail anyway. Uh, so you can see I'm just sort of sh um, sizing up the hand, making sure it's the right size sizing it up, um, which is actually, it's quite tricky. And um, an easier way is just to get a background image in there and kind of trace around it with your sculpting. So uh, pull it out to the right size and shape. Uh, and I'm practicing, so I'm trying not to use uh, a reference image that I copy. I use lots of reference images, but not one that I copy by putting it in the background. But that's a nice easy way of doing it. Just uh, get it in the background, so that you know that your um, sculpting of your hand is the right size. Okay, so uh, nails, I uh, pulled them out with the snake hook tool and then just smartened them up. So that's quite a nice use of the snake hook tool. It sort of works really nicely for that. And uh, what I'm finding, uh, the difference between female and male hands. Uh, female hands tend to be sort of a bit more uh, chubby looking uh, than sort of thin, uh, bulky male hands. So it's not quite what I mean. But the knuckles uh, stick out a lot more in male hands and they're obviously a lot bigger but uh, that's easier said than done uh, because you think, oh, just scale down a male hand, you've got a female hand, not at all. It's, um, they're a lot softer, a lot softer. Um, I'm, a, I'm obviously generalizing because maybe there's uh, hardworking females out there who are working in the fields all day or something, I don't know, and their hands are really sort of like male hands. Uh, but um, I think there is a sort of natural a tendency for male hands to be uh, more sort of uh, bulky in terms of the knuckles and uh, sort of um, uh, what, what would you call it more ridges and crevices uh, so much more sort of 
worn, it seems. They look really worn, uh, but they're sort of um, more bulky. Uh, I think bulky is the right word. I, I, I'm hoping you know what I mean by that. But if you look at references, you'll see that straight away. Um, so uh, getting, yeah, still getting the shape right. And uh, it's important to work a lot on the shape before you go into any details. I always say that, uh, but it's absolutely essential. And getting that hand shape right is not that easy. It's um, the hand also, the thumb, it drops down away from your hand like this. I'm just making sure I can see myself on the camera. Uh, so don't do it really flat like this because it, it doesn't look like that. It's really unnatural. It's got this sort of natural curve to it. So think about that natural curve even when you start modeling and you can sort of pose it from about here because that's a more natural pose. We don't really go that way very often. Uh, which does uh, bring me on to sort of rigging a little bit. Um, now, uh, the tendency, um, I, I looked up a bit of rigging because I thought, when I do hands, I always suddenly think, oh, I've, I needed a bone there to try and uh, turn it that way, and I forgot to put it in. I know that sounds silly, and you'd think, oh, you just follow the natural bones. It's not always that simple, and sometimes you have sort of supporting bones, because obviously when you're skinning, uh, you want uh, the skin to attach to certain bones, and so you have supporting bones, so you know your armature, you know your mesh is not going to deform when certain bones are moving. Uh, but the hand, uh, I found that the hand followed uh, the, the proper bone structure in the best way. So I put uh, four bones down here, for example, whereas some people just put one bone and then square it off at the top. But uh, which you can sort of rotate the fingers uh, this way, uh, like this and this. Um, but with those uh, four going down there, you can easily just turn those if you want to turn your hand. So if it's grabbing an object like this. So I did use that on the pipe uh, grab. And it is handy to have that sort of option where you can just turn these bones down like that. I mean, if you have a long line up here, that's fine as well. You can twist that and move it around. But I just thought I'd follow the, the structure and uh, bone structure of the hand. Okay, so you can see me going into a bit more detail now. I've booleaned them together and I'm just uh, adding a, f a reasonable amount of detail. I haven't gone too far here, uh, but I've gone to a level where um, I think it's uh, from uh, relatively close up, which the camera is reasonably close, uh, they look like hands. You know, uh, There's no pause or um, uh, yeah, what are crevices and um, wrinkles or anything. Uh, no very um, minor ones. There's deep ones, but no minor ones. Uh, you can see also I'm trying to, I thought I'd do female hands because I'm so, so weirdly, it's, it's easier to do male hands because uh, they blob around the place and they've got these crevices and everything and they look much more uh, gnarly in a sense. Uh, but female hands have a smoothness to them, uh, that sort of chubbiness and softness that I was suggesting. And I thought that was a bit harder to um, sculpt in a weird way. Sometimes it's harder to sculpt when there's not much detail. Uh, and it's more fun to get in there in the crevices and things. That's what I find anyway. So I thought I'd do a female hand, but actually it ended up being sort of a very androgynous hand really, uh, sort of you know, very in between the two, uh, because I didn't quite get the female hand right. Uh, but it's a good experience for me and it's good fun. Uh, and I still am enjoying Sculpt January. Uh, so it's, uh, it's all down to practice most of the time, isn't it? Uh, and uh, regular uh, practice uh, little and often is what I like to say, although I'm doing a sort of binge with Sculpt January at the moment, uh, but little and often is my sort of key to practicing and getting better. So uh, slowly smartening up and uh, spending a fair bit of time, again, this is sort of like the secondary level of detail, I would say, it, before going to the third level, which would be the pores and the, uh, those uh, tiny wrinkles and things. But I didn't really go that far. Um, I wanted to test out poses and I wanted to test whether I could get the multi-resolution to work uh, so I could um, use shape keys as well. Uh, so I'll explain that process now. Uh, so once I've got the hand set, and you can sort of see that I'm still working on it at the moment, I rig it with a pose. Uh, and I'll do a more detailed tutorial on this and hopefully put a link in the description if I remember to come back to this one. Uh, if not, just uh, put a comment below and I will get back to it and put the link in the description or just send you the link to the new video of the, uh, the workflow with multi-resolution and posing. So I rig the model um, and then um, 
I export that and into Instant Mesh to Remesh. You can use the Remesh in Blender, but Instant Mesh is a bit nicer. You can uh, direct the flow of your vertices uh, a bit better, and that's uh, advantageous when you're, um, well, it's just advantageous <laughs> whenever you're sculpting or animating and things like that to know the flow of your topology. Uh, so it's quite nice. So I took it into Instant Mesh, brought it back again. Uh, in 2.8, I have to export again as an FBX and bring it back because it doesn't seem to like the OBJs at the moment. Uh, I'm not sure why that is. And once I've got this, so basically, uh, you could uh, do a decimate as well in Blender. So I've got the high poly and a low poly version. So that's what that comes down to, the Instant Mesh taking it out, which I'm doing here. Uh, so once you've got those two versions, I've just got to think in my head how this works because it's still getting round it, and it's probably good for me to talk it through actually. Um, then um, I add a multi-resolution modifier to the low poly version. I think uh, Zacharias Reinhardt, someone told me that Zacharias Reinhardt talks about this in his uh, course. Uh, there's other uh, there's free tutorials out there as well. In fact, there's one where Zacharias Reinhardt is talking at a Blender conference where he talks about this approach right at the end of his sculpting video. Uh, so it's worth looking at that as well. Uh, but I'll, like I said, I'll have a tutorial on it. So you've got the <laughs> so you've got your two um, hands, the high poly and low poly, and uh, you add a multi-resolution modifier to the low poly and then shrink wrap it to your high poly. So you subdivide it as you normally do with multi-resolution modifier. There is a link in the description for, if you don't understand what I'm talking about with multi-resolution modifier and Dyn Topo, there's a link in the description for um, understanding both of those and the workflow behind that. And I do sort of talk about this aspect that I'm doing here within that. Uh, but the difference this time is that I shrink wrap this multi-resolution modifier to my high resolution me mesh once I'd subdivided a few times and it kept that detail. Uh, so then I was able to um, rig uh, the low poly, so the, the, the one with the mo multi-resolution modifier on, and, whilst, and you can move it around while it's all low poly and then when you go into sculpt mode you've got your multi-resolution modifier there ready to sculpt. It's not perfect uh, and there were issues with it. Um, so because it's distorting the mesh, uh, you get tiny little glitches in the mesh which you kind of have to smooth out. And you have to put a lot of work into smoothing them out. And if uh, it's quicker to sort of go down some subdivisions uh, or a subdivision, smooth out, and then go up and then smooth out again. Uh, so it's complicated, but if you, once you use it, you'll know what I mean. Um, so there was that aspect. Um, and also, once I'd posed the models, let's say I've got this sort of shape here, and let's say you are animating this hand, you want a, a high poly, so you're doing it for film or something, and you want a hand in there, and you want it for, to move like this. Uh, so you're going to have to um, have a high poly mesh uh, that you're moving around. Uh, you can use shape keys, uh, and that's what I was trying to do here as well. So um, on um, my high resolution mesh, sorry, on my multi-resolution mesh um, in the pose, and then I went to sculpt mode, but I added a shape key so that it didn't just distort the mesh, and then when I brought it back or something or animated it in a different way, uh, all those distortions would hold in. But with a shape key, you can change it back to its basic uh, mode, and that should work. I was finding it a little bit awkward in uh, 2.8. That wasn't quite working for me. Uh, and it's just not knowing the interface particularly well. But that's the crux of what I was doing. And that's why I thought I'd do this more in a tutorial style rather than rambling on about uh, other stuff that I sometimes do. Uh, so you know what to look up and you know the approach I'm taking. Obviously I'm not going detailed at the moment and one day uh, in the near future I will talk about this process a bit more. But hopefully you can kind of get the idea of where I'm going uh, with multi-resolution modifiers, shrink wrap modifiers and shape keys, um, which is something that um, Zacharias Reinhardt and others haven't talked about but it's sort of an animation approach where you deform your mesh so when uh, you've animated it uh, in different points you want to deform it so it looks more natural because you get all that pinching and squashing and stuff when you animate uh, and uh, because your skinning can't be perfect so shape keys help there um, to realign your mesh especially in this case I'm grabbing a pipe or the, the character whatever it is is grabbing the pipe so there's going to be sort of bits where it squishes against the pipe and your skin when you grab hold of something sort of squishes up and um, yeah bulges around those areas and that's where the shape keys uh, can really help and uh, I, I've still got a bit of work to do on this and that uh, was kind of my focus on today's uh, sculpt. So it's, it's not a very detailed sculpt, it was more 
thinking about this workflow, practicing that workflow as well, because there's lots of steps to it, but the more you do it, the more it becomes natural, and then you just develop it and push it further. And uh, these things can be massively frustrating. You think, oh, well, I don't understand any of that. But just take it stage by stage. Uh, have a go at just using, if you haven't used multi-resolution modifier before, then have a go at using that. So retopologize and use the multi-resolution modifier, or use the remesh or instant mesh. And just have a go at that and see what it does. I'll certainly be using that, I think, for the damage one, which is the next one along, uh, because I want to be using brushes for damage. I haven't decided exactly what I'm doing for that yet. Um, but practice that uh, and then think, right, maybe I'm going to do some poses now. Or maybe uh, don't worry about poses, but just think about um, how you can go from uh, a dying topo mesh to a multi-resolution mesh for those finer details uh, and then bring in the poses then bring in the shape keys um, i went a bit too far too soon but i i, I suppose i'm a bit more used to multi-resolution modifier now and dynamic topology than maybe others are um, but I, I was getting a bit of a headache with all the shape keys and uh, the different meshes and things um, so hopefully from that as i sort of feel like i've rambled on but hopefully that's useful to people out there to understand what i've been trying to do uh, with the sculpting and uh, you can then uh, try that for yourselves and do uh, let me know as well uh, which is been fantastic people have been uh, sending in uh, the com sending in comments uh, commenting below uh, about uh, different techniques that I should be trying and that's where I suddenly thought yes I do need to use the multi-resolution modifier before um, uh, again sorry before <laughs> again and uh, start thinking about that approach more um, you can just uh, do a detailed flood fill with your dying topo but don't do it in 2.8 because that doesn't work. Uh, but you can do that and then just sculpt uh, with Dime Topo turned on for detail. Uh, that's a good approach as well. But I quite like the remesh because the multi-resolution modifier is very, very nice. Um, you can quickly reduce your mesh. Uh, you can apply any details you've done to your base. Uh, and it, it's just a, it's a nice way to work. And it seems to run quite well. Uh, it sounds strange, but it just seems to run better than a dying topo mesh and so forth. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so uh, there's a few ideas that you can try there. Uh, this just sort of finishing off now. I'm posing the model in different places. I actually I was thinking of posing the same model uh, with and using the sort of shape keys and things, but then I ended up thinking I, I need to finish now, so I need to move on. <coughs> Excuse me and uh, get my poses in in order and i thought well i'll just do three hands sort of sticking out of the ground uh, like i have in the final piece uh, so uh, just sort of having fun posing uh, and experimenting with posing as well thinking about how the hand squishes up where the creases are i got it really wrong on this one in a second which i i, I leave it all in because uh, you can see i'm i'm creasing it there but i'm thinking it's it creases there, but it doesn't really crease there. It's much closer to the knuckle. And I was thinking, this looks horrendous. And then I realized I was far too far away from the knuckle. Also, it's worth thinking about the bones, which I didn't, and this is a mistake that I made, and I'm realizing I should have uh, changed. Uh, if I had my time again, I would have done it again. Um, I wouldn't do it again, <laughs> what I'm trying to say. But basically, uh, this joint, uh, these bones here are quite, a similar you look at it look at them from that angle is what I'm trying to say and look at the sizes I made this one really small and this bit really long but it's important to actually look at your references and look really closely and think where your bones go and I I just quickly drew out my bones drew out my knuckles um, where I thought the knuckles were and uh, went from there but I, I did the wrong shape for the little finger it just didn't work so getting the bone sizes right is really important because and that's where you can see whether your shape's working because uh, everybody pretty much has the same sort of uh, this length here is the same as a foot or something and it's the same as the top arm and the forearm are the same size all those sort of things it's really important to know those and just look them up every now and again to remind yourself uh, because I forget uh, and when I'm sculpting or something why have they got really long forearms or whatever uh, sometimes with stylized characters you want to do that and that's fair enough but for the most part if you're trying to go um, relatively realistic even with stylized characters uh, there's parts where you'll think the feet are too big even though it's in style it's not the look I'm going for so understanding and uh, knowing those different sizes uh, like five eyes to the head um, 
and one in the middle. Someone was saying, oh, but you put one in the middle. Yes, yeah. So uh, you've got one, two, and that's where that one goes. Three, four, and then five. So four, two and four is where your eyes actually go, and they're the other spaces. So things like that, important to know, and understanding anat anatomy, important to know. I feel like I've really gone on a long time, and probably uh, those who looked at, uh, <laughs> and tried to understand hands uh, and uh, using it as a tutorial will have left by now. Fair enough. Thank you for those that are sticking around and following me through the, the process and the challenge of Sculpt January. It, it's, uh, I'm still finding it very fun. Uh, it's still, uh, still feel like I haven't got enough time in the day, enough hours. It's very tough whilst working as well. I only work part time, so uh, Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, but on those days I start panicking uh, and get a bit, a bit worried that I'm not gonna finish. I'm finding EV even more fun now. Uh, the daily build of 2.8 is interesting today it, you get a normal map with your um, uh, principal shader as well now so when you add a new uh, it I, I'm assuming that's not a glitch or something but it just appeared with a normal map and I think oh there's a normal map there but it didn't work without a normal map actually plugged into it uh, you have to delete it so delete that little normal map uh, node that's there and the ambient occlusion um, I was watching Curtis Curtis Holt's video and he was saying about how he sets up his um, his scenes in his recent video, good video, well worth a watch. I'll try and remember to put a link in the description. Uh, and he said, uh, putting the ambient occlusion up to distance 20. And I thought, I'll do that. Oh, it looks great. Wow. <laughs> and you just think, oh, instant greatness. Uh, love, love Eevee, it's brilliant. And it's not so detailed, so I've gone to town a bit on the cranking up the bloom and the, uh, all the cool stuff, ambient occlusion and everything. So yeah, a bit of that here because there's no detail. But good fun, enjoyed it. And there's the finished result. Uh, I suppose onto the Discord server here. Yep, there we go. Uh, Man who's work there. Love that. Nice work. Nice work on the lighting with Evie. Uh, nice, uh, uh, what's it? Melancholy faces. Uh, we've got lots of melancholy faces. Nice, nice there again from uh, Mr. I can't remember now. I, it's annoying. I can't see the names as soon as I pop these things up. There we go. Liram puts his name on so I can uh, call him out. So well done, Liram. I, I think you're improving really well as well. It's good to see. So yeah, uh, put your names on the actual pictures. That would help. Uh, and then I can uh, mention your name as well, which it just feels nice to be mentioned, doesn't it? Um, there's some big boobies and muscles there. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, this one must be tiny. So uh, people sort of posting in bulk, that's, uh, that's great. It's nice to see sort of people catching up and uh, uh, giving it a go. It's giving it a go is so important. Uh, things seem scary until you try them, uh, and then you start and you think, oh, actually, uh, this isn't as bad as I thought. Um, but it's starting is often the problem. This bear is just brilliant. Love that melancholy look. Uh, it's taken from a sculpt, uh, sculpture. They've, they've posted the sculpture as well, but really nice. It looks good and it's nicely simplified as well. I think that's my favorite, the bear, so uh, really well done. So there we have it. Uh, I hope you got something out of this episode. Uh, thank you for watching. Thanks for the support. Do get along to the Discord server and join in. And uh, all the links in the description, uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.